everyone, Board Game Brody here with Meeple Mountain. I have a brand new copy of Celtic, a re-implementation of a game called Wonderland by Pegasus Spiel. Celtic is an economic pick-up-and-deliver type family game for two to four players. The Celtic Lord of the Wetterau is looking for a successor, which could be you. Players need to prove themselves worthy by traveling around the region and trading with neighboring tribes. You'll be performing one movement with any number of your family members together, and other players can also join in. Some locations will allow you to collect goods, and others you will need to visit to fulfill goal cards, granting large amount of victory points. When a player accomplishes five goal cards, or shows that they have collected one good of every single kind, the game ends, and the player with the most points wins. The game is set up here. There are 50 unique locations here on the board that all need to be developed. Also, there are seven trade routes giving you access to goods represented by these cards. Each card is placed in the trade location matching its type. So if you want to try to collect each type, you will need to go to each and every trade location. These are the goal cards. These cards will guide you to specific locations on the board that you will need to send your family members out to. When you have a family member in each of the shown locations matching the card, then you'll be able to build up these locations and gain points. I'll explain a little bit more about these cards, but each player starts the game with two. Each player will choose a family color and places all eight of their family members on the Celtic Village space. The starting player will then take the Celtic Prince figure, and the game will begin. Beginning with the first player, turns will go in a clockwise order over and over and over again until the game ends. On your turn, you will move at least one family member, and then you may complete a goal card if you are able to complete it, and collect trade cards before and after your movement actions. When moving a family member, and you will have to move a family member each and every turn, you will have the choice to move as many of your family members as you want as long as they all start in the same location. And then you will move them either one or two spaces following the roads, and also having all your chosen markers or family members end in the same location as well. After the active player moves, all other players in a clockwise order may decide to follow the move with one or more of their family members. So each other player will be choosing whether to follow or not to, and if so, how many of their family members to move with. All markers that follow the active player will need to travel the exact path and end in the same destination. Players will keep moving their family members on their turn and also trying to take advantage of moving their family members on other players' turns with the main objective to complete their goal cards by matching up a family member on each location indicated on one of the goal cards and or trading. To complete a goal card, again, you will need to have a family member on each location depicted on the goal card that you want to complete. Reveal the card for everyone to see, and then remove exactly one of your markers from each location depicted on the card, and return them to the Celtic Village. You will then gain the number of points listed on the goal card at the end of the game. These cards are left out face up for everyone to see at all times. You will then draw a new goal card into your hand and continue playing, except if you've already accomplished four of these goal cards already, in that case, then you will have one last card in your hand to fulfill as five accomplished goal cards triggers the end of the game, and you can never have more in your hand. You will also want to collect trade cards in the game, and you can collect any number of these as you would like during the game. To do this, you will need to get a family member to that location, and then you will collect the card and return one of your family members on that trade location to the Celtic Village and take your card matching the trade location. These cards will be placed face down in front of you and will be worth points at the end of the game. If a certain type of card runs out, then you're out of luck, as it's no longer available. Players will continue moving family members around the board, completing goals and collecting trade cards until 
either a player fulfills their fifth goal card or if a player has one of each type of trade card and decides that they want to end the game, revealing them to everyone. Players don't have to end the game if they have one of each of the trade cards, but they can choose to end it whenever they would like by revealing them to everyone else. When the end game is triggered, players can no longer move their family members, but they can complete any fulfilled goal cards or collect trade cards if their family members are on the appropriate locations to do so. Final scoring is done by players counting up all the points from their goal cards and then adding that to their influence from their trade cards. To do that, you will count up how many goal cards you have completed and add one to that value. This will result in the number of how many trade cards of the same type that can be scored. So if you've collected more of the same, then those cards will then be discarded. So you might not want to pick up more of a certain trade card than you have goal cards completed. You will then sort your trade cards by type and arrange them in order from most to least. If there is a tie, then the order doesn't really matter. You will then gain one influence point for each card of the type which you have collected the most of, then two points for each card of the type that you have collected the second most of, then three points for the next, and so on. So the card type that you have least will score you the most points, but you have fewer of them, and the card type that you have the most scores you the least, but if you collected less, then another type would score you the one point each. So really, to score more points, you want to collect a variety of different cards. But try to collect around the same amount of each as possible. It's like a math brain game, because one type will need to score one point each, no matter what, but instead of collecting that type, if you collected another type, it might give you more overall points than another. Anyways, players will score their influence points on the score pad and whoever has the most points by adding their influence from their goal cards with the influence from their trade cards wins the game. This is a fantastic family game that has easy rules yet the strategy and the way that you take advantage of moving your family members on other players turns will most likely help you win. Due to the mechanic of how you move your family members, everyone is watching what everyone is doing. Because you might be able to take advantage of something if you think you know the plans of another player. And I mean, I just love planning things out so when another player moves, I get to move as well. And then when I move, I try to go where I need to, but still try to guess where other players don't want to follow. The goal cards are fun to complete because you're trying to be efficient in how you get a family member on each of those locations shown, but you also might be planning for other things like getting some trade cards so you bring along a good group of family members with you. The best way to score the most points is by doing a variety of the goal cards and the trade cards as well. But remember that you need to get those goal cards accomplished in time because if you have more trade cards of a certain type than you have goal cards, then you will be returning them at the end of the game. What this game does special for me is two things. First, number one, the way that you move your family members following other players and taking some family members along with them. Secondly, or number two, and probably the most special thing is the way that the final scoring works. The gold cards are worth the points stated on them, but all trade cards will be worth points depending on how many you have of that type and of other types. Again, you can only score the number of trade cards of the same type as you have gold cards. Then the more of a certain trade card type that you have, the less points they are worth. So then you want to try to collect the trade cards that you don't have a lot of as they are worth more points, but also when you collect that card, it might shift the number of points scored of the other types. So really you will want to have a good variety of all different trade cards, so some of them will score you big points. But also you can plan in the game to grab three of the same type, taking your family members together, and then hopefully gather three of all other types as well to score you a decent amount of points in the game. So what I mean is the variety of these cards only matter at the end of the game when scoring them. 
Another mechanic I'd like to mention that they used in this game is that when you use your family members to score a gold card or to take a trade card, your family member will go back to the Celtic village. You can plan sending a certain number of them achieving goals or getting resources to the base and then sending them out again together, planning on the next thing. The game is really about being efficient with your family members. The art is great as it matches the theme, the icons are easy to find, and even the goal cards will mark them well enough with a circle, and it's pretty easy to find them on the map. So gather all the Celtic resources and complete your goals with your family and friends in Celtic by Pegasus Spiel. Again, this is Board Game Brody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around and check out some other board game reviews to see what you might want to get to the table.